All right, December 26th, 2023. Uh, welcome. Um, we have time for some meditation and then uh, I will talk a little bit on a topic I have been reflecting on. You know, when I offer words on, on meditation, um, you know, I, I pretty much talk about the same things every time, for variations on it, but um, I think it's useful just to, to understand that, you know, starting with the most direct and simple practice of mindful breathing, mindfulness of the body, mindfulness of feelings. It's really, it's, it's not a like beginner's practice. It's, it's really the practice as it is. And um, we can move into sort of other areas of reflection and mindfulness, but uh, those foundational elements are perennially valuable and useful. Um, so I hope you don't view it as some kind of like, oh, I wish he would like move on to the more advanced teachings. It's not that there's some way of meditating that's more advanced. What happens is that the more we meditate using the simple tools, that advances the mental states or the the concentration states, the mind states, and the and the potential for insight. Um, so it's it's not the practice itself as much as the unfolding that happens with uh, our engagement and our um, commitment and and really the amount of time and energy we put into the process. Okay, there you go. That's your uh, inspirational opening. So let's let's sit and you can close your eyes or just lower your gaze. So early morning to take the attention first out of the visual world that tends to be so consuming, which means then we turn inward and starting particularly with the sensations in the body, and then more particularly the sensations of breath. And there are a variety of ways of paying attention to the breath you can Focus on the sensations of air touching the nostrils, coming in and coming out. You can focus on the movement of the belly, of the diaphragm. You can follow the whole breath. So, feeling the air, following it into the lungs and the movements, different sensations. You can have a, a broader kind of open awareness of just movement of the body. So not so much focusing on a single point, but just feeling how the body is breathing. And these are just a few ways of working with breath. The idea being that when we feel the breath, we are feeling something that's happening right now. And so by definition then, our attention is in the present moment, not distracted. 
lost in thought. And often, quite quickly, we discover that the mind wants to get lost in thought. It's not satisfied with the simple experience of breathing. And so we can find ourselves in this kind of back and forth, something of a struggle at times. That we really don't want to make it a struggle. So just gently bringing the attention back when it goes off into thinking. And you might have other strategies or tools that you've learned. So applying whatever you find useful to this foundational practice of establishing mindfulness of breathing. And the Buddha suggests that we expand our awareness from just the breath to include the whole body. So feeling the breath and feeling the body, sitting body at rest. This is an approach. This is an approach that encourages a kind of openness. So we're not straining to zero in on the breath, but we're just feeling the breath as part of our broader experience. Breath and body. And as we bring in awareness to the body, we might find areas of tension or imbalance, or we want to soften or release as we breathe.
sometimes be able to just settle with the breath and the body quite easily. At other times, it will seem that they are almost inaccessible to us. There's some kind of a barrier between our awareness and our breath, body, the mind just is determined to be distracted. And so whatever the mind state is, whatever the amount of calm or focus you have, You want to have an attitude of acceptance. So mindfulness means to be aware of what is happening first and foremost. Doesn't mean we can't apply a certain gentle effort to being more present. We want to avoid being pulled into a conflict with our own mind. It's always a losing battle. Frustration really never leads to more calm, quite evidently. So at times it can be helpful to bring in an attitude of kindness when we are struggling or when we're distracted, when there's some difficult feelings arising. And just stepping back and reflecting on the difficulty of being a human being, having these feelings, of having these struggles. And breathing with that, the sense of gentle caring, holding yourself with kindness, with compassion.
mind. I hope everyone is doing well. Um, you know, we, um, whether that's, you know, really enjoying a holiday season or whether <laughs> hanging on just to get through it to the next year and not drinking or using no matter what. Um, yeah, that's, I think, feel like I've kind of had both <laughs> in the last few days. Um, so, so as I mentioned, I guess before we started the recording, so if people are watching the recording, and, um, I've been <clears throat> reading uh, some of, uh, well, I, I read through uh, step 11 in the, in the 12 and 12, the 12 steps and 12 traditions, Bill Wilson's commentary on the 12 steps and, and in thinking about writing about that step and and um, I mean, first of all, I was just really struck by how much it was God oriented. <laughs> and, and, you know, I, I, don't, I don't really read the 12 step literature much these days and, and sort of seeing how it's, it's a very different orientation. And, um, you know, and that kind of, uh, so, you know, part of what comes up then is, oh, what's the Buddhist Buddhist corollary to this? And I know uh, sort of in refuge, recovery and recovery dharma, they kind of like substituted the refuge in Buddha, dharma and sangha, uh, although they don't refer to it as higher power. That's kind of, that seems to be what's, what's happening there. Um, I think that's a, a useful way of approaching it. And, 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 you know, there are, uh, yeah, a lot of interesting things that can be done with this idea of higher power. But but then I, I kind of went back and look at the step itself. So step 11 says, we sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God, praying only for knowledge of his will for us and the power to carry it out. And what what struck me about that, aside from the God thing, is... What it, it seems to me that it's really oriented toward a behavior or externally oriented. It's because it's trying to apparently help you to get guidance from God so you know what to do. And that really, I think, brings us then to this kind of really critical uh, distinction between a Buddhist approach to spirituality and to spiritual practice and growth and a 12 step approach, which in simplest forms is simplest, most simply stated is, you know, a Buddhist approach sort of seems to start internally and move toward the external as in the opening of the, the Dhammapada one early translation says, the mind is the forerunner of all things. So it's sort of seen as the mind always starts everything. Whereas in the 12 steps, it's very much, you know, behaviorally oriented. And, and we know like there's the, you know, the, some of the writings about like, we tried all the therapies and all these things and, and we couldn't think our way out of it. And that, that's sort of summed up in the, in the line, we can't think our way into right action. We have to act our way into right thinking. So it suggests that there is this kind of split. Uh, and I want to talk about that a bit. Uh, first of all, I think it makes perfect sense in the addiction world to take this approach. That is, we need to act our way <laughs> into right thinking because when, you know, addicts who are caught in their cycle of addiction, there's a lot of, uh, rationalization going on and defensiveness and refusal to uh, acknowledge the problem. And, and then there is like, oh, I'll get therapy and that will cure me of my addiction, right? Or even I'll, I'll meditate and that'll cure me of my addiction. I'll go on one of these meditation retreats and then I won't need to drink anymore. And sort of, uh, and and we see how those strategies very often don't work uh, uh, 
typically don't work. Some sometimes, I mean, obviously there are many ways that people come into recovery, and uh, there's not just one sort of um, uh, process that it unfolds. But very typically, those kind of attempts to figure it out or cure it by some kind of inner transformation don't really work. And we wind up having to just take the action. So, so I like that expression, even though it's in conflict with, with Buddhism. I like this idea that we have to act our way into right thinking, because, because that was very much for me, and, and I suspect for many of you, like, I just had to stop drinking before I could get anything figured out. Um, you know, when I, 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 when, there was a point when I was visiting treatment centers a lot when, when there was, a, I could see people like really struggling with, like, I don't want to say I'm an addict and, and where I would just finally say to them, you know, the, for me, I don't know if drinking and using were my biggest problem but I couldn't solve any other problems while I was drinking and using. You know, I had problems when I was drinking and using. I have problems now. But when I was drinking and using, I couldn't really deal with my problems or solve them. You know, once I stopped, I could start to deal with them. So that behavioral aspect, which we see through the steps, it's, it, you know, there's definitely an internal process in the steps as well. But But I would say that, you know, powerless over alcohol, turning it over, doing a, a, a inventory, a, a making amends. The, these are very much uh, behaviorally oriented. And, and so, so it, it makes sense to say, you know, have that line that, that uh, you know, we, we can't uh, change our action through right thinking. We have to ch change our thinking through right action. But what then is missing, I would say, in that formula is that once you've sort of made that behavioral transition, that, and this is what brings people to the Dharma very often, is that the, the, the promised serenity is often not there, you know, because we realize, this is when we start to realize that oh, even though it seems to be an external process, it's actually an internal process. <laughs> and so I'll take you back to the Dharma point of view, is that even when you say that, like, I'm not going to try to figure this out, I'm just going to take the right action, I'm just going to stop drinking, uh, I'm not going to, you know, try to, you know, pu uh, get rid of my cravings or whatever, you know, cure myself through therapy or some kind of treatment. I'm just going to act. From a Buddhist viewpoint, that action has to be driven by intention. There's always intention. We don't always see it. And certainly in the early stages of recovery, we're unlikely to see it. But, the, but there can't be action without intention from, from the Buddhist viewpoint, you know. Um, so, so we see that in, in a, in some way, I will say that both, both arguments are right. You know, they both, they both contain some element of truth, but, but in terms of sort of absolutely how things work, it's true that actually the intention is going to come first. So the mind is, or actually going to be there. It's just that it's uh, not sort of, uh, the, we're not dealing with the entire mental <laughs> condition initially. We're just dealing with the mental decision or the mental intention to be to be uh, sober or clean. And, and so this kind of then, um, I think it does. So let me go back to the step then, because uh, you know this this question then, why are we meditating? You know, I think is interest an interesting one, 
because clearly what Bill Wilson seemed to think that uh, at least as far as I can see from these little these few little words of his and and some of this is in the 12th or the or the, the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous too was that his meditation was going to give him clarity about how to behave and certainly I think Buddhists are we're into behavior. We care about behavior. Sila is the foundation of that, of really of our practice. But we don't really meditate to get sila. <laughs> we see it as the other way around, that the sila is the foundation for the meditation. We meditate, first of all, I'd say to get serenity, but then out of that insight, which... <laughs> If you want, you could say that that's the guidance. That's sort of the equivalent of the guidance. It's not exactly guidance, but it's a clarity. It's a, uh, 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 yeah, I mean, it it sort of gives you guiding principles or uh, understandings of reality that then transform how you relate to the world. So all of this maybe is to... Um, convoluted to get a lot of uh, sense out of it. But, uh, but I find, I find it intriguing uh, to, to look at this and probe into this. Uh, obviously, you know, my Buddhism and the 12 steps being my brand, <laughs> so to speak. Um, you know, I do keep coming back to these questions. So, uh, um, you know, sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God. So although we can sort of talk about refuge, particularly in terms of the third step, you know, made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha. In Buddhism, really, I think the most direct corollary with God is nibbana or nirvana, you know, um, because that represents the unconditioned. And in really in, in Christian theology, God is, you know, when we get beyond the trivial trivialities, people, you know, talk about Christianity, but when we get to serious theology, God is the unconditioned. It's there's no maker of God, right? Nothing made God. God, God's this sort of original thing, and 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 so Nirvana is that. But the difference being that Nirvana is not seen as a, a creative, you know, or a generative uh, force, but just a self-existent reality that the ordinary world as we experience it is this conditioned world which means it's just there's the the basic principle of that is that nothing stands alone there everything is a combination of things and uh, and of, of things that are interacting with each other that there's no just what and this is why there can't be a self in buddhism because a self would imply something that stands alone, separate from, unaffected by other things around it. And this is what nirvana rep is in terms of how it's defined, that it's something that's unaffected by any causes and conditions. And that having an encounter with that, being, and I'll talk a little bit about that process, having an encounter with that changes your perspective on reality and gives you a different view of reality that then the, con the conditioned world becomes much more apparent as something that is conditioned, that is to say, that is not solid, 
that doesn't have any substance. We we live in this world as if things were permanent, as if they were solid, as if they had selves. And that's just, you know, that's a a functional way of operating in the world. But we take it beyond the functional and make it into a reality. We view it as real. We view self as real. We view uh, objects as as standalone objects unaffected by you know anything around them we don't view them as in constant process in constant as unstable as constantly changing you know it really looks like this laptop is just like a solid thing that that it doesn't look like it's changing but it is you know i know that because my last laptop died <laughs> just like that you know and uh, there's still data on there. I'd like to get back, but that would cost a lot of money. So when you have this encounter with the unconditioned, with this thing that is unaffected by anything else, it just is existent, then the contrast becomes striking and clear. Oh, this thing that I think of as me doesn't isn't like that <laughs> isn't like that unconditioned thing it, this is like very unstable and that that i like that i this term uh, unstable as a uh translation of uh, or you know another synonym for impermanence or anicca things are unstable so um so i'll say that my sense of how our practice operates and how you know how the one of the <laughs> the fundamental problem for a buddhist seeking enlightenment is that you are using conditioned tools in order to try to experience the unconditioned and that's not possible in a, a you know in a logical sense what we could say that we are trying to do is to create an experience that's so close to being unconditioned that at a certain point there's a click So the when we see the language of of deep uh, peace, the the stillness, the 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 stilling of formations. This is one of the the terms, stilling formations, right? When you're when you're calming your mind, so the formations are the things that your mind creates, right? And when you're stilling the mind, you're stilling the formations, you're bringing the mind to this place that's very similar to unconditioned, very, very little is being conditioned, very little is being created. And so you're, you're bringing yourself almost into a kind of corollary of, of Nibbana, so that, you know, you might make it possible to uh, for this sort of uh, experience to to happen um, that's my best version of it but I, I have no real idea i'm just making that up so in case you're wondering if i have any expertise on this uh, i just think about it so so uh, just coming back to you know i, I just was like, oh yeah, like I'm supposed to be talking about recovery. <laughs> and sometimes as you guys have been with me all these years, you know, sometimes you just get really into Dharma and and I am more engaged in Dharma these days than I am specifically in recovery. Um, even though, uh, you know, anytime I really sort of, anytime the, the objects, the conditioned objects hit the fan. <laughs> recovery becomes my real uh, 
go to place because because it's really about dukkha. It's really about suffering and the and the. Uh, I, I identify my own uh, dukkha as being very much my own suffering is very much tied in with all the qualities that that are part of uh, being an addict. Uh, nonetheless, I think it's quite interesting to to sort of explore this area between um, uh, Buddhism and the twelve steps and uh, around around meditation and around what what the purpose of it is because certainly we understand that serenity is is supposed to be part of it as well but again you know there there aren't really many tools or guide guidelines for that what that means i mean you know bill wilson's version of of meditation is to you know read the saint francis prayer which is really in buddhist terms reflection or contemplation it's not meditation it, it reminds me and i'll finish with this and uh, open it up for discussion but uh some years ago i was teaching at the shambhala mountain center it was actually the one time they put me they have this stupa that they love out there because it's like magical uh and and they they and I guess the different spaces were used. So they put me in the stupa where they had this like massive Buddha in the in the main room. And there's like other levels, like you can go up, there's all these different like uh, floors in the stupa, but you have to be like, you know, advanced enough to have taken, you know, done the certain Tibetan magical things to be allowed to go up in the stores. But we we're in the, in the main hall and this, a huge Buddha, and I'm like sitting right in front of this giant, like golden Buddha. Right? It's very funny. Uh, but uh, one of the people said, "Oh yeah, you know, my sponsor said uh, to meditate. Uh, just read the big book slowly." <laughs> I loved that. I was like, "Yeah, okay, that's that could work." I mean, not exactly my approach, but. Uh, Anyway, um, you know, this is just a, a boxing day talk, so you can't expect too much from me. But uh, thank you all for showing up. And uh, we have some time left for people to, to chime in and, you know, maybe <laughs> add something helpful. Anybody? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Hi. Hey, Vicki. <laughs> so I've been um, contemplating um, serenity. Uh, the, I mean, the prayer, uh, you know, yeah. uh, uh, that we say all the time, you know, I'm like, oh yeah, I know what that is. And then uh, recently I'm kind of like, I have no idea what that is. <laughs> you know, I mean, I really, I, I wonder you know, I really am wondering what serenity is, what serenity is, you know, mm -hmm. I, I think I, I think I've had experiences of other beautiful states and maybe I've had serenity, but I just didn't know, you know, I can't match up the state to the word, you know, the language is the thing that's kind of interesting to me at this point. It's, uh, and it's, um, yeah, it's kind of like, I mean, I got, I, I have had, I believe, what I would call tranquility. Okay. I I have had joy. I have uh -huh. had rapture. Mm -hmm. I have had deep peace. Okay, then you've had serenity. Well, what? <laughs> what? Uh, but what am I talking about? I no, I mean, I, I mean, I don't, you know, strictly speaking, but I, I think that you know. Because you you just listed several of the factors as you, I, I know you know this, but just for the group, you list mm -hmm. several of the factors of the of the seven factors of enlightenment: joy, tranquility, uh, concentration. You were sort of implying that anyway, and I my you know whatever translation is that tranquility in the seven factors of enlightenment is serenity. Because okay. what I, what I would call serenity is when there is no inner tension. 
or very little, you know, that the inner tension is subsided to the point that you don't feel any need to really fix or do anything. That it's kind of like, yeah, everything's okay right now. So okayness, perpetual okayness, one one of my home oh, members says. Wait, perpetual? What, yeah. Whoa. I mean, he says he says his his uh sobriety, you know, has has allowed him perpetual okayness. Okay. And I'm like, oh, that's, I mean, I like, I like when he says it. It's it, nice. It, who, who says that? It's Jeep. Who says that? Oh, Jeep, Jeep. says that? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right, right. You, people don't know. That's a, a friend of ours from Ithaca. Um, you know, as a uh, fundamentalist Buddhist, <laughs> I, I would have problem with the term perpetual, but, uh, you know. Right. Okay. As, as it implies something right. that is not right. impermanent. Right. Okay. So, good. Yep. But it's yeah. nice, you know. I I I I don't think he's, you know. Uh, you know, I don't think he would argue with that point. I think he would mm -hmm. agree. You know, and and it's an interesting idea. Okayness. To me, suggests acceptance more than tranquility. Okay. Yep. And, and and then I and then with serene, I have a <laughs> there's a kind of brightness to it, or a, uh -huh, yeah. you know there's a there's an uplift, right? The or the a long light, e creates. A light, uh, yeah. Okay. Maybe it is just the word, but the, but it, the associations are more with joy, you know, in a way than with that deep, the deep deep stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I mean. It's like the word PT, which is translated to joy, it has those two sharp long E sounds in it. Whereas sukha, which is not tranquility, and tranquility is something else, it's pasadi, I think. But sukha has much more of a soft sound to it. So serene versus serenity has, you know, I, I just think, uh, it's, I think it's just this actual literal sound of the words. I mean, the word PT to me really captures like the woo, you know, mm -hmm. uh, of uh, of rapture um, mm. as opposed to a serenity. And and anyway. It, yeah. And it, but it's a I mean, you know, I'm a language person. And I, yes. And, and, and it, it was just it's just recently where I'm kind of like, I don't know what this means. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> I don't want to say anything, you know. <laughs> I mean, it, it, I think you do, and, and and I think you're just talking yourself into not knowing, you know. Okay, or or well, I think I may have had. I mean, I think I have had serenity, but I'm kind of like, well, what, yeah, but <laughs> how do I talk about it? Or you know. Anyway, it's a, it's one of those things for me, you know, yeah. that's, that's, you know, it's just, it's just my mind doing its usual, usual thing. No, I, I mean, I found myself, you know, on this recent retreat, mm. getting stuck on certain phrases. I mean, the term mental formations became just inscrutable for me. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And I just couldn't, couldn't penetrate it. And uh, you know, at other times it might seem like, oh yeah, mental formations. Okay, sure. And you sort of don't make a big deal. But then it's kind of like when you, you know, when you start to say a word over and over and over, and then it's like it loses its meaning. <laughs> okay. Thank you, dear. Yes, nice to see you. Yeah. Who else has a as a word? <laughs> or two. A thought, no thoughts. <laughs> thoughts, thoughts. Uh, yes. Hi. Uh, yeah, I, I, I thought you were thinking. And <laughs> I'm thinking. I'm always thinking. It's just getting the words out is the. But you know what came up for me was the word grant. Uh, grant, grant, oh, grant me, me this rent. Yeah. Well, and that's... and then I'm like, oh. you know, it's it's uh. It's not granting me. It's I have to work for it. <laughs> yeah, really. Um, 
you know, on one hand, wise effort, right? Yeah. Balanced yeah. between sitting back and, you know, taking action and on one hand. But on the other hand, what's become revealed to me is that I don't really have to work at all mm. to be in a state of serenity. It's just there. For now. Yeah. And um, that's where the magic is. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just that shift in perspective that, yeah. oh, yeah, every, things are not solid. Things are empty of, yeah. at its heart, empty of greed and hatred and confusion. You know, it's it's a shift in perspective, and I can't always get into that shift in perspective. But yeah, yeah. I am kind of now. I feel so much better after being here. <laughs> it's you know, you're early on. You were talking about the, in the beginning about your, your schedule is all discombobulated, and it yeah. is. You know, <laughs> it is. And my kids are here, and I don't want to miss stuff. There's stuff going on in the kitchen, and I, you know, yeah. Yeah. but I want to be here because it. I get charged. I uh, I'm a good charge to go back into the, yeah. you know, the fullness of life. Um, I don't know. Yeah. But it's grant. The word grant came up and I, mm. I just, I, it's not really granted to me. I mean, it's, I don't see it that way anymore. No, I, I agree. I mean, this is like, um, you know, where we really do get into the, the need to, uh, I, I'd rather not make it into like, like a conflict right but rather like oh how do i understand this what how can you know how can i make this yeah what what they're pointing to be useful and and what do you know what do i need to put aside and and just like let go of and um and certainly yeah god grant me <laughs> it's just i you know i can say those words but internally I'm just thinking, may I move into this space or may I have this attitude? Um, and uh, that's, yeah. And, and, and I appreciate you saying like that, yeah, it, it's the serenity is always there. It's about a perspective. And that's what, that's what insight is, you know, insight, that, that's what insight is pointing to. It's pointing to your perspectives, like, everything is impermanent whether you want it to be or not you know it's just a matter of whether you're noticing that what's your perspective or is your perspective that these things were solid or and that you know the people shouldn't die uh, or you know or is your perspective oh this is this is natural this is reality this is uh this is okay yeah okay yeah yeah my, I just had my son got a call on Christmas Eve. We're playing a game at 4 p.m. on Christmas Eve. Mm -hmm. And he got a call from a, uh, an employer down in San Diego, which is <laughs> the job he wanted. But we're all God. convinced he's going to get, because he's on a fourth interview for a job here. Oh, God. Mountain View. And we're all convinced at this point that he didn't get that one because he had, didn't hear and blah, blah, blah. And so we're like, okay, he's going to live here for maybe a year or two. And so settling into that, I'm like, oh, well, that's sweet. And part of me. And like, oh, that's really sweet and sweet. And then, and then he comes back in. He says, well, I just took the job in San Diego. And I was just <laughs> like, what? It's impermanent. And I got sad. I was like, oh, he's just, you know, anyway. Yeah just on a dime it's like yeah what we think is and we plan and but anyway. really yeah new year's yeah. eve I mean, christmas eve wow weird people are working on christmas eve yeah <laughs> christmas eve was a sunday wasn't it yeah it was a sunday too what the hell yeah what the well some people are more ambitious than others well, anyway. my dears, yes, um, I'm, I myself may be uh, doing some un something unusual next week. Um, I'll, I guess, I'll just say it. Um, I don't know if have I, I don't know have I talked to this group about the professional golfer who I have been giving some mindfulness guidance to. 
I may go and be his caddy next week for a tournament in Southern California. I was like, I can't carry your clubs. He was like, no, you can use a car, push, the th push them in order to literally be his mindfulness guide as he plays. Wow. That's cool. And I'm scared as hell. <laughs> I'm like, oh shit, now the rubber hits the road. It's one thing to say, oh yeah, pay attention to your breath. It's another thing to say like, okay, right now, breathe. And don't, don't blame me if you hit a bad car. shot. <laughs> It's not a big tournament. It's a, it, it's sort of a trial. You know, he was like, well, I can do this little thing, this little tournament, and the, we can do this. Because I said, well, the best way for me to really teach you would be if I could actually be with you on a tournament. But I wasn't thinking it was possible. And then he was like, well, you could be my caddy. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. You, you got to do this, man. I, I mean, I know I have to, but I'm like really sweating bullets right now. <laughs> I yeah, to breathe, and if it didn't work, way. try to breathe again. Because I have to be like, I have to be serene. Oh God! I have to be. You do. Yeah. And and I can't like right. I'm just going to be like the professional meditation teacher that I am. Uh, but there you go. <laughs> so I will. I will let you know how it goes. All right. Have fun. I got to get out of here. Thank okay, you. Bill. Nice to see you. All Good right, care, everyone. everyone. Yeah, and I hope people are going to come on Saturday because I don't want to be alone when I when I teach the Spirit is, Rock day is long. Is that online or physically at Spirit Rock? It's not physically at Spirit Rock, sadly. Okay. It's, it's on online. it's on Zoom. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. All I right. Registered. Okay. Take care, everyone. Bye. All right. Bye bye. 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 Thanks, Kevin. Bye. Don't Thanks. recommend any clubs. That's exactly right. He said, no, no, you're not gonna do that. <laughs> well, I was I like, was, well, I, I just... can't I can't like give you yardages. He's like, no, 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 you're not going like, to yeah. do that. No, no, no. Oh, just have fun, but I was just curious about the ball, the shots, aren't they impermanent? Of course. Once, yeah. So I was like, whoa, but you can get in a whole conversation about that. There's a lot of powerlessness going on, believe me. Mm. Yeah. Mm. very cool oh. that's awesome. what tournament is it it's just a like it's like uh they a thing called a mini tour mm. it's like and they this is like for aspiring professionals really to go out and play and mm. you know there's very little money involved in it it's it's just kind of like learning to play in these more pressure situations so yep you can okay. Just, yeah, just go right back into your retreat. Like, yeah, that's right. Right. Yeah. Just whoosh, you know. Like, sure. Yeah. Thanks. I'll that's do good. that. No problem. Have fun, Kevin. No problem. Thanks, you guys. All right. I'll see you. Bye. Okay. Bye. Happy you New Year. You want to back from Spain? Unless I can join somehow from Spain, that might right. be cool. Okay. Nice. Have a leave? great trip. Thursday. Have Thank fun, you. Angela. Yeah. Thanks. yeah. Wonderful. Love you guys. Love All right. Bye bye. Bye.